Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black control deck titled Slime Time, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the Sludge Monster plus Toxrill combo. We're playing three copies of the 7 mana 7 7 legendary Slug Horror from Crimson Vow, saying at the beginning of each end step, put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. So this triggers on the opponent's end step as well. And creatures you don't control get minus one minus one for each slime counter on them. So this will quickly wipe away all one toughness creatures from the opponent and then start shrinking down their team. And whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, create a 1-1 one, one black slug creature token. And for a blue and a black we can also sacrifice a slug to draw a card. And we can even sacrifice Toxrill to its own ability as it's also a slug. And then Toxrill plays very nicely alongside Sludge Monster, the 5 mana 5-5 five five horror, saying whenever Sludge Monster enters a battlefield or attacks, put a slime counter on up to one other target creature, and non-horror creatures with slime counters on them lose all abilities and have base, power and toughness 2-2. Two two. So if we have a Sludge Monster in play and then play Toxrill, Sludge Monster can attack, turning any opposing creature into a 1-1 one, one with no abilities, as the minus one minus one from Toxrill will apply right away. And then end of turn, Toxrill triggers, putting a second slime counter on that opposing creature, killing it, giving us a 1-1 one, one slug token in return. So the two play very well next to each other. And these are also the two main win conditions in our deck. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, looks like your pretty typical blue-black control deck. So at one mana we've got plenty of interaction with two copies of Fading Hope to bounce the creature. If mana value was three or less we also get to scry one. Blood Chief's Thirst can take out small creatures, can also be kicked for larger creatures or planeswalkers. Two copies of the new Dreadfugue can be cast for one mana to make the opponent discard a non-land card with mana value two or less. Can also cast it for three mana thanks to its cleave cost, in which case we can discard any non-land card. Then at 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Test of Talents, which shines against the various Epiphany combo decks, letting us counter target instant or sorcery spell, and then search its controller's graveyard hand and library for any number of cards with the same name, we get to exile those, player has to shuffle and then draw cards equal to the number of cards exiled from their hand this way. So great card against non-creature decks, and then of course we've got plenty of removal plus our sludge combo, which is also very effective against creature decks. Then two copies of Infernal Grasp as our two mana spot removal spell of choice, destroying target creature at the cost of two life, playing this over power word kill, since that can often miss on some key creatures like various dragons. Then two copies of the new Parasitic Grasp can be cast for two mana to deal three damage to target human creature, and we also gain three life. So an excellent removal spell against the white aggro decks, can even kill the pack leader out of mono green, and then of course also very important, can kill Faceless Haven, which has all creature types for just two mana, and then we can also cast it for its cleave cost at three, in which case we can target any creature. Then we also have two copies of Cram Session, giving us more life gain, and we also get to learn, grabbing one of our seven sideboard lessons in Best of One, including Environmental Sciences to keep hitting our land drops, Teachings, as well as Introduction to Prophecy for Card Draw, Pest Summoning, making two 1-1 one -one Pest Tokens that gain one life when they die, we've got two copies of Mascot Exhibition as an extra win condition, as well as one Confront a Past to take out opposing Planeswalkers. Then also very important are the two copies of the Meat Hook Massacre as one of our sweepers, giving all creatures minus X minus X until end of turn when it enters a battlefield. And then whenever a creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life. And whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we gain one life. So very important source of life gain and a great sweeper, especially against Mono White. And then every now and then we can also finish off the opponent with the Meat Hook Massacre by sacrificing a bunch of slug tokens. I've even won a game by sacrificing Toxrill himself to deal the final point of damage. Then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Divide by Zero, returning a spell or permanent with mana value 1 or greater to its owner's hand. Can also use it to bounce our own Meat Hook Massacre back to our hand, so we've got access to another Sweeper in the late game, which can be quite important. And can also use it to bounce the new Uncounterable Hullbreaker Horror back to the opponent's hand as it's still on the stack. And then we can maybe discard it with a Dread Fugue or the 2 copies of Palaka Predation, which we can play as a tap land or as a targeted discard spell, making the opponent discard a card with mana value 3 or greater. Then we also have two copies of the Celestus, a legendary ramp artifact which can maybe help us get to Toxrill a little bit sooner. 
and then it also introduces the day and night cycle, and whenever it switches between day and night, we get to discard a card and draw a card, as well as gain one life, so we can get rid of maybe the second copy of the Celestus if we draw it, or conditional counter spells against creature decks, or removal spells against control decks that aren't particularly useful. Then at 4 mana we've got 3 copies of Memory Deluge as one of our main card draw engines, letting us look at the top X cards of our library, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast it, and then put 2 of those cards into our hand, so it can help us assemble the Sludge Monster plus Doxroll combo, and then we can also flash it back out of the graveyard, in which case we can look at 7 cards, and then we've got a couple more sweepers with a singleton copy of Crippling Fear, giving all creatures that aren't the chosen type minus 3 minus 3 until end of turn. So combo is a little bit better than Shadow's Verdict with our Sludge Monster combo, as Shadow's Verdict will exile those creatures, meaning we don't get any slug tokens from Toxrill, but can also be very important at dealing with cards like Old Growth Troll and preventing various death triggers, as well as exiling the opponent's graveyard. So especially powerful also against the blue-black zombies deck. And then we've already covered Sludge Monster and Toxrill. Then a mana base, 26 lands in addition to two copies of Palanca Predation, as well as access to environmental sciences and their extra ramp from the Celestus. So a lot of mana sources, which is important if you want to get to 7 mana reliably, which is not only good for Toxrill, but also the flashback on Memory Deluge. And then we also have the full playset of Field of Ruin to deal with opposing creature lands, which can also be quite threatening for a control deck. And then we've got some creature lands of our own, with two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant, can help us exile cards from the opponent's graveyard as well, important against opposing copies of Memory Deluge, and then two copies of Hall of the Storm Giants, another important win condition against opposing control decks, and then we've got four of each Basic Islands and Basic Swamp, and then four of the Blue Black Pathway, Shipwreck Marsh, and two copies of Ice Tunnel as an additional dual land. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Of course, going to be better against a creature deck than a control deck with two early interactive spells here. And then I guess I'll play Island turn one, in case we need to Fading Hope, turn two Hive, turn three Shipwreck Marsh. Turn one Snow Covered Plains is promising, so probably a white weenie deck. Thalia is quite good against us. Probably gonna have to Infernal Grasp it, but we've got our Sludge combo going here. And Savior of Allenbok. Alright, so we'll let that resolve. And then we'll Grasp Thalia. Deluge is an excellent draw. And then hopefully Sludge Monster on 5. Sentinel can exile some stuff from my graveyard, which could certainly matter, exiling a Deluge for instance. But I could remove its ability with Sludge Monster. And a Luminarch. Alright, I think we let that happen. And then Deluge could maybe also find a Sweeper we can cast as opposed to just going for Sludge Monster right away. So I'll take one. Alright, did not find a sweeper, but grasp is good. And then I'll take another land as well. Few could also be useful, although if I cast it for one mana, there's a decent chance I miss. So would I go for a sludge monster next turn? Could target the savior, so it cannot train and remove the sludge monster. And then we should be okay next turn. And then keep grasp as removal, which can also deal with their creature land. want to just keep hitting my land drops, I think, going forward. And I could maybe use an extra blue. Alright, let's sludge monster. Sentinel can exile my Deluge, so probably going to see a 5-powered Sentinel attack by a Sludge Monster, which is fine. Just hoping they can't remove the Sludge Monster with, like, a Brutal Cathar. But Skyclave Apparition's not going to work. Right, Spellbinder probably exiles Toxrill, so that's going to be quite expensive to play. 
But I still have a lot of early interaction here. Could always stop deck one of our four sweeper effects. Actually goes for Parasitic Grasp, making it cost four. And an adversary just as a 3-1. Fair enough. Sentinel gets one last attack in. Opponent actually swings with the team. So I think I kill Aspirant over Savior. And then I could hang on to Persidic Grasp, just fading hope the Sentinel. Which otherwise they could use the Coven next turn to protect it. And another Sludge Monster isn't bad, although I think I'd rather try and find a Sweeper if possible. And then... Attacking's a little bit ambitious here, so probably gotta stay back and then hold up Parasitic Grasp. Which may or may not want to kill Spellbinder, although next turn the Toxrill will just be able to kill it unless they have another Spellbinder. So I'll pass. Yeah, they do have another Spellbinder indeed. So that's Exile Stoxrill. And then I'm probably forced to kill the first Spellbinder so I don't take too much damage from it. But that still leaves us in a reasonable position. Opponent does not have Coven. Unless they animate Faceless Haven. Can gain more life with Crime Session. And our opponent's down to one card in hand. And I'm tempted to just play Predation as a land instead. To get closer to Toxrill. What do I want to learn with Crime Session is the question. Could go for Mascot Exhibition, could go for Pass Summoning as something I can play right now. Could also go for Environmental Sciences to get even more lands going. Because your opponent's going to have a hard time beating Toxrill once it lands. Yeah, I guess Sciences is reasonable. Another Intrepid Adversary could potentially be problematic if they pump their team by two points. So that's a reason to still cast a Predation. So I guess I could go take Sciences, cast Predation. That's kind of the middle ground. Sure. And a Mall of the Skyclaves would have been problematic, so glad we cast it. Alright, so now I just need to hit two more land drops. Opponent can activate Haven to then attack with a Sentinel by enabling Coven, but it's only three per turn alongside Spellbinder. So that's what they'll do. So we have time to find a Sweeper in the meantime. Test of Talons not particularly useful. So now if the Sentinel attacks I also have the option of animating Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Question is do I want to attack with the Sludge Monster? Because I could ground either Spellbinder or remove Sentinel's ability and then have a Hive on defense to block. But then we're still taking quite a lot of damage on the way back which may not be worth it. So I think we pass and then hope to draw either a land or a relevant interactive spell and take another six. Let's see if I attack, ground the spellbinder. Opponent can hit me for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen. I can prevent like th two damage profitably. Yeah, that seems too risky. I don't really want to trade off the Hive, because then it 
it's going to be even more difficult to get to Toxtral. So yeah, that second Spellbinder did a lot of work for them. And Test of Talents is pretty much a death card in this matchup. So again, I could trade Hive for Sentinel. Didn't think it's worth it. Alright, so big top deck coming up. Untap land probably wins us the game on the spot. Alright, let's go. And then Sludge Monster could attack to target Sentinel. And then they cannot block profitably. So they might as well jump with Adversary now to gain 3 life. Toxrel triggers. Everything dies. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So great showcase here against Mono White. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, our hands a little bit on the slow side, but we do have Fugue for some early discards, so I'll try it. If we're up against an aggressive deck, I can cast it for one mana. If not, I can maybe save it until three. And it tapped Emiria's Call, what do we make of that? Could technically be a white aggro deck. I've seen white aggro decks that don't play the snow package play Emiria's Call but still more likely to be a controlling strategy, so I'm gonna hang on to Dread Fugue here. And yeah, it looks like blue-white control. Alright, so we'll play this turn three. And then Deluge is a good card to have. Sludge Monster doesn't have a great chance to do much in this matchup. So I don't have to discard now. But I would like to maybe take away a Deluge from the opponents or bait out a counter spell. And it's going to be a Chwari Disruption, unfortunately. Opponents got their own Field of Ruin to deal with my Hall. I'll go for Deluge when we get the chance. Opponent has a Behold the Multiverse. I could Deluge in response. I think I'll fire that off end of turn instead. Could have also played Field of Ruin to destroy my opponent's Field of Ruin as they were tapped out to protect our Hall of the Storm Giants, which is going to be important in this matchup. I'll go for Deluge. Could try and play around another Disruption by playing a turn behind. But we also need to hit our land drops. Opponent's gonna take the opportunity to destroy our hall. And grab an island. And then... Probably go for Discard Spell and Crime Session. This turn I could go Celestus into another Discard Spell. And have a look. Alright, so the Hole Breaker is definitely a card we're interested to take away, leaving a Mastery and a Miria's Call. Opponent's got two more copies of Field of Ruin in hand, so our Creature Lands are gonna have a hard time. Field of Ruin destroys Field of Ruin. Luckily, we've got a few more basics in the deck. Celestus triggers, so I can get rid of one Blood Chief's Thirst here. And then I can Cram Session. I would like to keep hitting my Land Drop, so I could Cram Session for Environmental Sciences, or I could just cast a Deluge here. I guess I could cast the Main Phase Deluge. 
and find a land plus another deluge. And then cram session for could get a mascot exhibition already. Although we do have two sludge monsters as threats. So maybe I just keep hitting my lands with sciences. Celestis triggers. Test of Talents is a great one. So do I want to discard maybe a Sludge Monster or maybe a Meat Hook Massacre? Massacre does answer the Angel tokens from Emeria Skull, which we could see in action soon. So maybe one Sludge Monster could go... Yeah, sure. And there's the Emeria Skull. So a good opportunity for the Meat Hook Massacre. And then I can Environmental Sciences first as well. And then we could see a Devastating Mastery to just destroy my two permanents here. Opponents got their own Hall of the Storm Giants, which is going to be somewhat problematic. And we drew a Toxrill. Alright, so now what? I could Deluge looking for maybe another Field of Ruin. I could just cast Toxrill and hope for the best. Feels like I should Deluge, maybe look for Field of Ruin, another discard spell. In case they have a hole breaker in hand. Alright, there's a field of ruin. And then probably go for Infernal Grasp as an answer to the creature land. And then probably activate this now. Now I could have also flashed back Deluge, but then I would have been tapped out, unable to really use Field of Ruin. And now we still have Test of Talents available. So we were pretty lucky to draw Deluge, whereas the opponent didn't. Opponent foretells what could be a Doomscar. So... I'm okay just passing and flashing back Deluge, as opposed to playing creatures into a potential Doomscar. Bone goes for Behold, which is probably not what I want to test of Talents. I would rather test of Talents their Deluge if they're playing that. Question is whether I want to Deluge in response. I think I do, since I don't want to get this countered. And then finds Divide by Zero and Hall of the Storm Giants. Although we know about an opposing Field of Ruin as well. Opponent keeps one on top. And they have another Hall. Alright, so... I'm in an awkward spot where I'm kind of forced to play Hall as my land for the turn, which plays into their Field of Ruin. And this is our last... Hall of the Storm Giants, although we do still have to Hive of the Eye Tyrants as well. So maybe that will get the job done. And then for now, I can maybe afford to play a Sludge Monster, keep up. Test of Talents or Divide by Zero. Or I could pass with Memory Deluge available instead. To keep hitting my land drops as well. Opponent's got 5 mana here. Yeah, it's a close call. I guess getting a sludge monster going would be fine. So I don't have to discard to hand size either. A faithbound judge. Alright, so that's the opponent's big win condition. Fair enough. I mean, we can bounce the enchantments with a divide by zero too, so I'm not too worried. Hall is going to turn into a creature. 
I could still bounce it with a Fading Hope here. Which buys me a lot of time. And then Predation seems fine. So Sludge Monster can attack. And then... Toxrel will finish off the Judge if they don't block. And then can I keep up a counter spell? I can, so I can test of talents a Doomscar. Although it's not really the target I want to counter, I would much rather counter a Deluge. So we'll see if they chump first or not. Because they might just chump block to get it in the graveyard, which they do. Now let's have a look. Opponent's holding a Fateful Absence as their last card, fair enough. In which case, I probably just pass, and then we can Deluge end of turn again. Opponent plays Hall and a Sunset Revelry. Alright, that's gonna draw them a card, make a token, and... Gain 4, so pretty effective, although Toxrill can wipe up those tokens pretty quickly. Opponent's gonna destroy my hall, which we were expecting. And then I guess I want a Deluge now. Finding couple goodies. Keeping the basic land in my deck could be good in case of another Field of Ruin, because we also have some Field of Ruins left. I guess it would be nice to have some more win conditions. Don't really need the Meat Hook Massacre, since Toxtril can deal with those. So, take Toxtril. I guess I would still like to hit my land drop to an extent. Dreadfugue probably not going to be incredibly helpful, given my opponent's only as one unknown in hand but I guess it can also take the Faithful Absence. But then they'll just cast it in response on the Sludge Monster. So, interesting decision. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to take the Fugue anyway. Alright, land is a good draw. So that could deal with the opposing Hall of the Storm Giants, although I don't think that's a high priority. So let's start with Fugue for 3, although then I won't be able to play Toxtril and keep up a counter spell, which is kind of the goal here. So if I Fugue for 1, our opponent's certainly going to uh, destroy it with Fateful Absence in response, but maybe that's okay. So I could attack first just to get a counter on the human so it dies right away. And then we'll see if they want to chump. Opponent does. Then I'll fuke for one mana. And we'll see if they want to kill the sludge monster here. And then Toxrill gets to live. Uh, they're going to negate it instead. Interesting. Well, I guess I'm okay playing Toxtril now and just letting this happen. And then they can decide between killing Sludge Monster or Toxtril. And I'm not going to fight over it. Go to our end step. Toxrill triggers, killing the 1-1, one, one, making a slug token. So if the foretold card is Doomscar, I'm probably going to be forced to counter it. Sinner's Judgment resolves, as we can divide by 0 it. So not too scared. And there's a Doomscar. 
All right, so would have liked to counter Deluge, but maybe our opponent's not even playing it. Absence stocks real response. And then our opponent's got a Disdainful Stroke in hand, good to know about. So they've got another Judge as their win condition. We do see Deluge vanquish the Horde as well. A lot of counter spells. And then Hullbreaker, as well as Professor to maybe grab some sideboard lessons. So I think I do take the Doomscars. And then we'll try and close out the game quickly here. Another Field of Ruins, nice. So, do I want to overextend playing Toxtril into potential Vanquish the Horde? I think I do while they're tapped out and can't Disdainful Stroke. And hope they don't top deck. And then I can destroy the Hall of the Storm Giants. And add a Toxtril to the board. And then I can level up my Slug. And then I should probably do this now. And we'll still have a Divide by Zero up. Alright. Can Divide by Zero my own creature if they do cast a Sweeper. Professor of Symbology resolves. Let's see what they get. Mascot Exhibition. That we can easily fight through with Toxrill's ability, so I don't think we need to even counter it. As all opponent's creatures shrink down, probably a good time to bounce the Judgment. And then get maybe our own Mascot Exhibition. Sure. And then if I just pass a turn and go to end step, all the opponent's creatures die. Probably no point in attacking into it. And uh, yeah, that seems fine. So we get a whole bunch of slugs. And we'll pass it back. Can also use Toxtril to sacrifice some slugs to draw. As our opponent replays the judge. They've got their own Field of Ruin. And do I want to do anything end of turn? I guess we can flash back Deluge. Yeah, drawing the Deluge, whereas our opponents didn't find any, made the difference here. That's fine. Could Field of Ruin a Field of Ruin, in case we draw Hive of the Eye Tyrants. Although we're running out of basic lands here. So we sacrificed one land for making this play in the hopes of uh, finding our last creature land. And then we can draw with a clue. Okay. And then probably find to attack with the team. Would actually be nice to find a Meat Hook Massacre just to drain the opponent to death by sacrificing our slugs. I guess I could have just killed my opponent had I killed the judge and attacked, so might get punished here for opponent draws a Vanquish the Horde. But I think we're still gonna be okay. Professor of Symbology is not gonna do it. Alright, so. Could have ended the game a turn sooner, but get to see more sweet Toxtral synergies. Everything turns into a 1 1. Alright, and then that should be the game. Alright, sweet, so we battled it out against Blue White Control, seeing the importance of a couple discard spells alongside our card draw. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand is keepable, especially for up against a creature deck. Turn 1 planes, familiar, so it looks like mono whites. 
play Hall so we can Fading Hope. Maybe bounce a turn to Aspirant here. It's going to be Sun Gold Sentinel instead. Do I want to bounce that or just kill it with Infernal Grasp next turn? Um, tough call. I guess I'll take the one and then uh, next turn we can decide. Don't have a sweeper in hand yet to kind of play towards, otherwise I could maybe save some removal. So we'll see what they do. Faceless Haven always threatening. But we do have a Field of Ruin and a Spellbinder on cue. So probably grasp the Sentinel now. And then I'll take the Divide by Zero most likely. Right, takes a Fading Hope. I guess now we cannot go Field of Ruin plus Fading Hope as a sequence. But I get to keep up Divide to maybe bound Spellbinder. Although whatever I learn, they can make me discard. Adlin. Adlin's probably worth bouncing here. So before they get a chance to make a token, send that packing. And what do I want to learn for? So... It's unclear. I would like to find a sweeper. What happens if I get teachings? We don't know if our opponent has a land drop for the turn. Although I imagine if they had one they would have played it to play around Jory Disruption before playing Adlin. So let's say they keep four cards in hand. Next turn I draw. Yeah, it's going to be unlikely for me to empty my hand for teachings. So I might have to go for Prophecy. Or I could get a Pest Summoning to buy time on the ground until we draw a Sweeper naturally. I do have a Fading Hope as well. But it's going to cost me three mana. Tough call. I think I get Introduction to Prophecy. And then take five. Sludge monster to draw. Alright, so now we're probably looking at Fading Hope Adlin. Next turn Sludge Monster, ground a Spellbinder. And take it from there. It's going to be another Sentinel instead, which grows the Familiar. So do we want to bounce Spellbinder then, or bounce Familiar? I guess we'll see what else they do. Hits us for six. Yeah, I guess we'll bounce the familiar even though they can replay it. Because Spellbinder targeting with Sludge Monster deals with it pretty cleanly, whereas familiar would still have two plus one counters. And then we're just looking for a sweeper to clean up the board. So they do have Coven enabled on Sun Gold Sentinel. And we're in trouble if they have a Mall of the Skyclaves. Cards we want to draw, Meat Hook Massacre, Shadow's Verdict, Crippling Fear would all be excellent. Opponent does play second Sentinel as opposed to keeping up the ability on the first, so maybe overextending a little bit into a sweeper. Ooh, Leech and Angel, that's bad news. Alright, it's gonna provide a steady string of lethal threats. 
So Sludge Monster could attack, turn it into a 2-2, and then we've got Field of Ruin as an answer to Faceless Haven or Cave. So I can Prophecy first, see what we pick up. Grasp has to be amazing, and kind of liking Fading Hope too. Although, let's see, if they play Adlin, it doesn't die to Grasp, but it does die to Fading Hope. So I might want to keep Fading Hope on top. And then Sludge Monster can attack. I can Field of Ruin and still cast Fading Hope, but then I would shuffle away the Persidic Grasp. Or would I rather have Grasp available and then just kill Faceless Haven if that gets animated? Close call. So let's say I keep Grasp or put in place Adlin instead of activating Haven attacks. Then I'm only taking three. So I guess Grasp is good enough. And then I should probably play an untapped land so I can Field of Ruin plus Grasp if needed. Opponent does go for the Adlin play, which I could still grasp the Legion Angel since we have double Field of Ruin for their creature lanes, which is also completely reasonable here. And the monster can sludge Adlin. And then we'll still have a Fading Hope. Also have Hall of the Storm Giants, which can either attack or block. So I think I'm okay attacking. Probably go for the untapped land. So I can Hall plus Fading Hope. Although I guess I could do that anyway by just using the Hall to cast Fading Hope. Opponents moving to combats. So I don't have to use Hall, I could just use Hive of the Eye Tyrant to block instead. And then still be able to field the rune. Opponent's gonna boast, making a 1 1. Opponent plays Legion Angel, so can I guarantee to kill them here? Not quite. So I could Field of Ruin plus Fading Hope, but then they would still have one blocker available. But I should probably still Field of Ruin here. Destroying cave first. And then do I want a Fading Hope now? I think I take my draw step first. Ooh, the Meat Hook Massacre has to be excellent here. So I could attack with Sludge Monster. And then Massacre afterwards. Probably Massacre before attacking, in case they would double block Sludge Monster. Although they're unlikely to do that. So maybe I should attack first. They'll probably jump with a 1-1, one, one, but then I also gain less life. Right, let's just do this now. We've got Field of Ruin for Faceless Haven. Can bounce a Legion Angel back.
and then uh, Hulk can finish them off. This also gains me a life with Meat Hook Massacre by waiting for it to become a creature. Alright, so it was definitely a close one against Mono White here. Legion Angel, quite good against control decks. But Hall of the Storm Giants plus Sludge Monster, or I could also go for Hive. We'll get the job done. All right, we're on the play with a hand that's pretty soft to creature decks with no early interaction. But we are okay against other types of decks with a Test of Talents, Deluge for card draw. So it's really matchup dependent here. I'm gonna take a bit of a risk and keep this. Being on the play also makes this hand less sketchy than on the draw. And hope not to see turn one planes. It's gonna be a forest into Sentinel, but no snow land, so unlikely to be the typical mono green deck. So we've got a test of talents up. Hopefully no Magda. Not her sentinel's fine. Alright. Stormseeker resolves, and that is a pretty scary card. So I'm gonna have to main phase Deluge here, so it doesn't switch to nighttime. Definitely want to Meat Hook Massacre. And I guess I'll take a second since we have plenty of lands. So we'll be able to wipe the board next turn. So even if they play a chariot, it's not the end of the world. A Goldspan Dragon, on the other hand, would survive Massacre, so that's an issue. Although then we could play Sludge Monster first. The Blue Splash could be for counter spells, maybe an Alrin's Epiphany, who knows. It's going to be a Tovalar, so that's going to draw two cards with Stormseeker. We're down to six, but... We'll get to play Meat Hook Massacre on three at least. Back up to ten. So opponent on Teamer Werewolves. And there's a gold span. Time for Sludge Monster. And then Thirst could kill the wolf as well. I guess that's okay. The arsonists can get in there. Alrighty, so if I attack and our opponent jumps, we can still meet Hook Massacre to finish off the arsonists, so that's not a problem. So. Yeah, I guess we attack first. Although they could have more haste creatures on the ground, like another Stormseeker, which is a reason to just stay back with a Sludge Monster. Yeah, I guess I can buy that too, just Massacre for 4 and pass. And then next turn I can start attacking after playing a second Sludge Monster. The upside of attacking first is that we could keep up Test of Talents. Uh, although our opponent doesn't seem to have a lot of Instants and sorceries. So, yeah, let's massacre for four. And then we'll pass it back. 
Still have a deluge we can flash back for the late game. And there's Magda. And a level up. Crippling Fear, excellent too. So I kind of prefer playing a second sludge monster over casting the Crippling Fear right now. So next turn I can start applying more pressure, because if I Crippling Fear, I can't really attack because of another haste creature, potentially. So let's just go Sludge Monster. Can target Magda. Keep up Field of Ruin, and then next turn go for Crippling Fear. Level 3 Ranger class now. And another level 2. Don't think there's a reason to field of ruin anything, because they have more creature lands later. It is night time. And then could be fine to crippling fear now. And then do I wanna start attacking is a question. Now that it's night time, it is still a little sketchy. Because of the potentials of a Storm Rage Slasher getting in there. Although I could double block it with Hive and one monster if I only attack with a single Sludge monster here. So that feels reasonable. So just gotta make sure to keep my Hive untapped. Name Horror. And we'll send in one Sludge monster. And then next turn I'm threatening 13 damage between Monster and the Hive. Do have a test of talents in case they are playing Elrond's Epiphany, but doesn't seem like it. Alright, so... I can at the very least force a chum block and now we can just kill Magda and attack for the win. Sweet. So managed to beat Teamer Werewolves thanks to a well-timed Meat Hook Massacre. So yeah, overall pretty satisfied with this blue-black slime deck. Got to see Toxrill alongside Sludge Monster a few times and that's always very satisfying getting to shrink down those creatures and often kill them on the spot. So yeah, if you're looking for a deck playing Toxrill and Sludge Monster, this is a pretty good first build, but I'm sure the uh, deck will develop as the metagame develops and we need to adjust some of the inclusions. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.